In today's video I'm going to show you how I designed and built this flying wing from scratch using a software that I'll show you in a second. And I cut all the pieces with a laser cutter. So everything fits perfectly and it's a very beautiful design. Look at that. So let's get started. I decided to build a flying wing and for that I'll be using a great software for designing wing structures. This software is called Wing Helper. It helps in the design process while visualizing the progress in a 3D model. When the model is ready, you can export the CAD drawing files and then cut the parts to build your model. I'll be making a video in more detail about this software soon, but you can check it out in the description below. If you love designing and building your own RC airplanes, this is perfect for you. After exporting the drawing, now I can modify anything I want in a CAD program. In this case, I'm using the community version of NanoCAD, a free CAD software, very similar in functionality to AutoCAD. But there is a multitude of CAD softwares out there ranging from free and open source to paid. From there, I arrange all the pieces that needs to be cut to then transfer them to another software I use to connect to the laser cutter and cut the pieces. This is an excellent laser cutter machine that I'll be reviewing soon. Or maybe the review is already done and you're watching this video in the future, so check the description below. With this powerful laser cutter I can cut balsa wood very easily, but sometimes, depending on the settings, I need to do more than one pass to make sure that everything is cut. This is the material already cut. It's so amazing the precision you can get with this technology, and everything was ready in about 13 minutes. Cutting it by hand definitely would have taken me more than 3 hours, and for sure the cut would have been less perfect. After that, first thing I'm going to do is a fit test. There, I realized that I had a problem with the plan that I printed. It's out of scale. So I printed a new one and I was ready to start gluing the wings. The design of this wing was based on the materials I had available at the moment. So the spars and leading edge are made out of balsa wood. But these spars are normally made with stronger materials like plywood, harder woods, or even carbon fiber rods to have a more resilient design. The laser cut makes perfection almost achievable. All the pieces fit perfectly and the alignment is remarkable. Now, time to build the left wing. Building this wing is a great experience. I'm using the classic balsa wood construction technique, which is being implemented since the beginning of model airplane building, and the resulting structures are very similar to those of full-size real airplanes, which looks realistic and beautiful. Both wings are going to be glued permanently with a pseudo fuselage in between, where we have the space to place a battery and other electronics. In the middle, I'm using an aluminum tube for a structural strength.
I still need to cut other pieces, like this motor base with plywood. This pseudo fuselage is the only part I couldn't design in the software, so I scratched my head for a while thinking about how I was going to do it. In the end, it turned out very simple. Of course, a lot of sanding was involved to finish the surfaces. And this is how I made the small servo trays using the plan as a template. I'm using the exact servos from FR Sky. Great servos for these small applications. Actually, they are more capable than what I need them for because this wing is very simple. And they are very small, powerful and light. Check them in the description below. The only thing I need to modify about them is their servo leads because they are very short, so I solder an extension to them. Now I'll make the elevons. And finally, I'll cover the wing. I went with a transparent covering to be able to see the cool internal structure of it. It looks more fascinating. Let me know in the comments below what colors you would have chosen. Now the covering was a bit tricky in the section where the wing meets the pseudo fuselage because there is a step, so there was not much wood for the covering to adhere to. Other than that it was mostly okay. But I'm pretty sure I could have done a better covering job with more patience. And here we are, 206 grams with battery included. Perfectly legal to be flown in many countries without any stupid f permit or registration. It's time to fly it. I've balanced the center of gravity of the wing in the torical center of gravity, which is calculated with the geometry of the wing. A very simple process. Checking the control surfaces for the last time and here I'll demonstrate a safety feature to avoid accidents with the motor. It's two stage arming with two switches. Now I check the CG for the last time so you can see in the camera and I'm ready to launch it. First is a scary glide test, no power at all just to see how it glides, but doesn't seem too good. First launch was horrible. Then I realized it's extremely sensitive, which means that the CG is too far back causing instability. Just to be sure I'll launch it again. So I bring the CG forward a bit by placing a bit more weight, but it's still too sensitive so it needs even more weight. This time I'm not having luck.
and it's finally flying. It took about 30 grams more of weight in the nose of the aircraft to get the correct CG. I also had a lot of tip stalling and uncontrollable spinning crashing into the ground a couple of times. Unfortunately, I didn't get that on camera. So after flying for a bit and surprisingly not breaking the plane after several crashes to the ground, I tried doing some down wash to the wingtips, basically using a hot air gun and twisting the wingtips down a bit, thus reducing the angle of attack of the wingtips. Now it can work a little bit, but it's better if you design it before building the wing. And then I went out again to try one more time. This time I trimmed the aircraft a bit and it's flying very good. But I still wonder if I should put more weight in the nose. I love how much it glides. But at some point it happened again, spinning out of control to the ground. I think that happens when it stalls and this time I capture it with my camera. Remember that this is a hobby for me, I'm not an engineer or anything like that, but I would appreciate your comments about this. Should I use different widgets? Should I put more weight? Or do you have any other suggestions to reduce the tip stall? Leave that on the comments below. Well, I hope you enjoyed this journey with me. There is more to come, just click subscribe to don't miss any of that. And this video will end in 3, 2, 1.